Can we read uh, Mark 6? Let's read Mark 6 from verse 1. Mark 6. Mark 6. And he went out from friends, and he cometh into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Whence has this man these things? And what is the wisdom that is given unto this man? And what means such mighty works wrought by his hands? Is it not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended in him. And Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save his own country, among his own kin, and his own house. And he could he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I was reading this today. I found that we seem to be so much ignorant. Tell them, tell them, we are so much ignorant. So this is not a new thing. Because when we read here, we see what happened to Jesus. Can you write, beware of ignorance? Beware. Ignorance is very dangerous. Because if we can see here, when Jesus began to decide to go to his village, the Bible said they were offended. Why? Because they know the family. Let me say they knew the family. How do they know the family? The first thing was, was verse 3. They said, uh, Is it not this the carpenter? The son of Mary? Here you could see that Jesus was working with his father. And his father also, I mean, maybe the grandfather also was the carpenter. So this was a generation of doing carpentry. So that's why here they say, is it not this the carpenter? This, did you say the son of the carpenter? It says this one is the carpenter. So where did he get these things? And the Bible says they continue to say, we have his sisters. We, have his we know this family. How come now they come with it comes with these things? So the question was, why they get they got offended? They never thought about someone from that family can rise up. But Jesus was doing things that they were questioning. Look at verse 4. 
Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor in his own country. And among his own kin and his own house. This thing, I have experienced it. Because I have traveled many places. You know, places there we travel, you find that people, they even believe if they touch you, they will be healed. Among your people, they cannot see beyond what they are seeing. They cannot see beyond the man. He said, even in his own family, his own kind right. If, if you want to see that this is working very well and it affects us and bring us to ignorance. If I invite someone here you don't know, the way you will be saying amen here, the way you will be saying hallelujah here, even if you go to a church where your pastor is not there, you will see that the way you will be acting is different when you are home. It cages us in ignorance. Say, you are ignoring the person that God sent to you. Tell your neighbor. Ignorance is killing you. Can you see what ignorance can do here? All right, look what happened to Jesus. And look at this one. Verse 5. Verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work. Except to lay hands on, on the few people and he healed them. Pastors, don't be surprised when people are not believing in you. They are believing somewhere. Because they cannot see beyond you. And this is ignorance. You know, they will be believing someone they don't know. You'll be surprised if few people are giving testimonies. Can you see what affect the mighty works is your ignorance? What affect mighty works from God? Is ignorance. What hinders God to work? It is not pastor. It is your own ignorance. Tell your neighbor what that is. Say, what hinders God not to work? Tell your neighbor what that is. What hinders God not to work? It is your ignorance. So, I mean, I've been trying to find why pastors are complaining. Sometimes you enter the church, no manifestation. No, people have been caged. To no, people have been caged. Jesus, he just lay hands on the future. Jesus, he didn't do even deliverance. He just lay hands on the from there he could not waste he went away. Even myself, I want to do that here. Come here, preach, preach, let him. Off I go and drink tea. Because it's written here. Without ignorance, even when pastors say receive, you receive. Because Ignorance nullify your faith. Tell ignorance nullify your faith. What is the meaning of ignorance? I mean, let me say 
wrongly informed. Let's call it ignorance. Ignorance, let's call it today wrongly informed. That means you have got another information. Therefore, you have to lack the right information. This information that is needed on that part where you are supposed to operate in the spirit. Where you are supposed to be activated and your faith becomes active. But you found wrong information. It has affect the right information that was supposed to be there. Yeah, affect information in your So always you lack information. No, no, lack wisdom. Can I tell you this? Always where you lack. That's where Satan capitalizes. When you lack the right information, Satan will feed you the wrong information. Tell him, if you lack right information, if you lack wisdom, Satan will feed you with wrong information. Can you say it again? Tell your neighbor. Because I want you to go home having this information. You've been listening to stories that has affected and brought ignorance. Affected your faith and brought ignorance. And what was supposed to be placed where you were supposed to be active on the spot. We defeated there. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can you just look at this scripture? I mean, the same scripture. The same, the same scripture where we are reading. I want us to read the last verse. Verse 6. Verse 6. Yeah, verse 6. Yeah, verse 6. The Bible says, He and he marveled. Ahota. In other way, he said, mm. Come on, mm. How do you get Imave? You have to use even your shoulder. Mm. In other way, he was, when he was doing what he was doing outside, when he, he came on, when he looked around, he found a lot of information ah, that does not produce ah, results. No word of God, but <laughs> stories. You look at them and say, mm. and then the Bible says, he lay hands on the few. He went <laughs> away. And this has really affected the church today. Today in the church, there's no sign, there's no wonder. So the question is, who is not anointed? And who is not appointed? Because if you read there, you say, Jesus said, mm. okay. mm. How can you come here? You're expecting to receive to a man you are blaming. Because what is needed for you is to believe. You have to believe. Your heart must be open. You're ready to receive the word. Jesus, look at ah, this. These people, what is happening? They look around, searching for the faith. Mm. If Jesus was called on that church, we were supposed to have said that Jesus was attacked that day. He failed to perform. How many times you pastors fail to perform? You are you there, you find, you are trying to push, but nothing is happening. You ask yourself, what is this ignorance? The ignorance is affecting the people around you. If you believe, say amen. How many of you are lacking today? You need Jesus and his word. Let me show you another uh, 
meaning of ignorance. Is negative attitude. Have you ever you are trying to show you know this. Even if we try to show you. you because you have got negative attitude, you also show us. Have you ever find that you are trying to tell people this is the way? Yes, this is the way. We know this way. The issue is we have got negative attitude. Even if it convince you. Do you know when a person has got negative attitude, that person has been convinced. Now you cannot convince again. So Jesus tried by all means to find faith. He could not find it. Says, if you are convinced also allow Holy Spirit to convict you. Don't be convinced. Be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Let me give you some scripture. If we read 1 Timothy 1, I will read some scriptures. I've just tried to show how far let's read from verse chapter 1 verse 12 to 16 uh -huh. read to 16 it says and I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept, acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ must shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. This is a pattern that Paul is speaking about. We cannot overcome ignorance unless we found mercy. We cannot. We need the mercy of God. Here, the pattern that God demonstrate his love by Jesus so that we have to be forgiven of our sins. Our revelations of understanding where we can move out from ignorance we need the, we need the mercy of God. Without mercy we can still come to church and preach. We, we, go to we can still position ourselves. But we will fail to come out of the things that really affect our faith. When God gives you mercy, the moment when the mercy of God comes, the mercy of God is the demonstration of his love and his patience. He won't allow you to die until you change. Paul said, I was a chief sin. But God demonstrated 
his love and his patience by showing mercy. Now I can do, I can change and preach Jesus. I have seen many people who are Christians who are still captured by fornication. Let me say it again. I've seen many Christians that sin is still dominating in them. Who are still captured in wrongdoings. It takes the mercy of God for us to overcome that ignorance. I mean, how can you say you know this is wrong but you are still doing it? It means you have negative attitude. You have, you have declared to yourself that no one can change you. Have you ever found people who say, me, no one can change me? Because you are wrongly wired. When you are wrongly wired, Nobody can reprimand you. You don't need anybody on top of you. If you live a life where there is nobody who reprimand you at all, because you will justify everything you do. And some things, though you are justified, you will be doing them in ignorance. Many Christians today are in ignorance. But they justify their actions. They justify what they're doing. I'll give you an example of what happened with our Lord Jesus Christ. If you go to Mount of Olives, when you are coming down, when you are passing the graves, you reach a place where there is a valley. You could see Jerusalem on the other side. You could just see what is happening, there is a noise. You are on the level where people of Jerusalem are on the same level with you but there is a valley. The Bible says when Jesus reached on that level, he looked at Jerusalem and he wept because of their grief. Jesus looked at Jerusalem tears began to come out and began to ask why these people cannot see the one who has been sent for them? Let me just show you from the scripture what I'm talking about. Because if talking here, Luke 19, Luke 19, if we read from verse 41, this is the only, sec the second scripture where Jesus cried. The first time Jesus wept in Lazarus' tomb. The second time he wept because of ignorance. Can we read verse, Luke 19 verse 41? And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Carry on. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Stop there. This shows that we can still have eyes to see, but we are not seeing. You people, are you seeing us here? It's possible you are not seeing. Okay, read that scripture again. Saying, if thou has known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, 
but now they are hid from thine eyes. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. You know, maybe if he was speaking in Venda, he were ask for a jury. If we are speaking in my own language, we will say tears fell down from his eyes. When the disciples were asking or looking at him and asking themselves, At Jerusalem. and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If you knew the things that were going to bring peace unto you. If you only knew, so this thing has been hid from your eyes. If you know that I was here from your own good, now I'm here, but you can't see me. He was there where they can, it was like a same level. He was coming from prayer. But he was going down and he had to climb up. Marana, to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you only knew the things that were supposed to bring peace unto you. The very bad thing that's happening is that you don't even know them. They are hidden from your eyes. Carry on reading, Mama. Actually, Pilar, 43. For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and kept thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out. Okay, stop there. If you read there, you will see that our enemies, they don't have advantage of us. Except we are ignorant. It says good as you are applying all the formulas. You are bound to produce what is needed. And your enemy won't speak against you. Can you see when your enemy is approaching this road? He won't destroy anything. So now here, Jesus said, you people, Your enemy will come. In other words, your enemy uses your ignorance. Where you are weak, he penetrate. Tell about where you are weak. That's where Satan penetrates. This fulfilled the scripture that he turned around. Searching whom he can devour. Right, I will give you an example. One time I got revelation that the people that are trying to fight me they cannot do anything unless I veil myself. So now I was told that what they want to do is to send ladies. So and those ladies, if they take pictures with me, you see, it will be told, these are my girlfriends. I began to be in advance. So, wherever I travel, when someone wants to take picture, I pull a brother and put him in the center. You, your sister, I want a picture with you. I say, yes, brother, come here. I say, stand here, sister, stand on the other side. Let's take a picture. This has been a very good method for me. I come to church. I began to say, whoever wants to see me must see Mama first. Some people were angry because they don't know. But I had strategy 
of nullify the plan of the enemy. Sometimes somebody will come and sit this side. When I pass here, I get a smile. You will see the smile that will come out. When I enter, I will see the smile. I've already been told that somebody is there has been sent. When I enter, when I see the person, I will see the smile. When I look at the smile, I want to do the beginning of school. I don't know the me. Because I've been informed already. I don't know if you hear me. I'll say I'll enter. Don't know inform me when the word devour or there I I've been informed already. I know what the person is there for. Listen to this. The reason why you are defeated, you are not informed. Ah, we now bono shulwai. Kita ba yaura uti bi dita. You don't need to entertain us. You don't need to entertain. You will entertain things that you were not supposed to entertain. You need to entertain us. The friendship is a cool. You will entertain friendship that will need you nowhere. You need to entertain a machine and a don't need to. You will entertain enemies that will conquer you one day. The moment when I enter here. So can I go and get out there and mola? Jesus, you don't mind the face. When you start my smiling, your smiles. When the days we see us, we need to go and open our eyes to know Nuka. I will do another serious face like I saw or I heard a stench. I know that you will never smile again. And the person will say, what is he saying on me? I don't know I was informed. I don't know if you hear me. Amen. That's what I say, information makes you to be prepared on any challenges. So you can see if you have information, you so can we overcome. So we have one hour of heavy information. You can overcome. Let's leave that. Maybe we can just go to another scripture. In Job 36 verse 11 to 12. Job 36. 11 Job 36. Yes. Read from verse can you read with Amplified Bible? Yes. Job. Job 36, verse. 36, 11 to 12. Verse 11 and verse 12. Yeah. If they hear and serve him, they will end their days in prosperity mm -hmm. and their years in pleasantness and joy. But if they do not hear and obey, they will die by the sword of God's destructive judgment and they will die in ignorance without true knowledge can you see what ignorance can do without ignorance you have knowledge you have got wisdom you are bound to be rich read that verse again this one of plenty plenty but if they do not hear and uh, obey yes they will die by the sword of God's destructive judgment. Uh -huh. And they will die in ignorance without true knowledge. Verse 11 says, if they hear and serve him. Stop there. If they hear and serve him. I want to dwell there. I want to explain to you what is the meaning of that. If if they they hear hear and serve him. If they hear. Listen to this. You cannot overcome ignorance without saving him. If you want to see that you are moving forward, save him. If they hear and save him. Listen, to this. the problem is we are so, I mean, inclined ourselves in positions that are no matter. God wants us to serve him from servants to friendship. If you want to make friendship with God, serve him. I don't know if you hear me. Serve him. There is issue of being a disciple. There's a second level of serving him. There's a last level of friendship. So if you want to hear God speaking to you, serving him is important. 
When you serve God, you don't have expectations. Serving is serving without expectations. If you have to serve God with expectations, it means you are working for wages. I don't know if you are hearing that. You serve him without expectations. It is him that will position you to where you will be appointed for plenty. Just read that verse 11 again. But if they do not hear and obey, they, sorry, it's 12. If they hear and serve him, mm. they will end their days in prosperity. Prosperity. And their years in pleasantness and joy. Let us not fight prosperity. The Bible says that. If you are not prospering, serve him. Whatever you are doing is good for you. Do it. Do it with your power. Okay, our ignorance sometimes in the things of the spirit makes us to aspire some directions. Sometimes we end up copying others. Because we think is we can reach where we can reach. We have got dreams. We are looking at others. We want to be somewhere. Sometimes we end up calling ourselves with different names. So that people will understand us. But serving God. Listen. You cannot serve God unless you obey Him. You cannot obey God unless you hear Him. If you reach the level where you are serving God. Automatically you are blessed. Even if there is nothing. Do you know that the best miracle you need in life is to hear God when He speaks. The best miracle, the best blessing, the best blessing is to hear God when He speaks. If you reach a level where you can hear God, you won't mind about what you are facing. Now. Our ignorance make us to derive some weight to our opportunities and goals. But if we serve God like stupids, when the voice of God comes, we will do what we have created today. Right now we are copying others. If you want to see whatever you are doing now, the way, the way you walk, the way you dress, your hairstyle, everything is copied. Everything is copied. I don't know if you're hearing that. But you need to reach a level where you serve it. If you serve God, you will fight ignorance. Because many of us, we are spiritually, I mean, promoting ourselves spiritually. We can see without seeing. Even Jesus spoke about it in John 9. I'm here to those who are blind to see. Those who say they see, they remove. Because people they claim to see, they claim to know. That's why when Nicodemus came to Jesus, that's why Nicodemus came to Jesus. He said, "It's better you crush everything you become a baby." Kau no pumule kau fela na utumu wenwa na. The experience of seventy years. Kitsibo checha wa au chama mwenye matangata. You need to crush it. Utoka udi pumula. You start from being an infant. Utume fasi wenwa na. Because it has never brought you to where God wants you to be. Kau baling toje adi awi samola muti mo na nyakoro yehona. Our ignorance brought us to where God doesn't want us to. We are tatu sawori samola muti mo asa nyakingri yehona. Ignorance promote. Usimeli tawa watat. 
Many of us, we are what God what he doesn't, Baba, what he doesn't want us to be. Many of us, we have created ourselves to be what Baba, God what he doesn't want us to be. But if we fight ignorance, when we start to serve God, we obey God. By hearing him, we do what he says. I, I want you to be faithful on what you are doing. Tell me, be faithful in what you are doing. Be focused in what you are doing. And step ahead. It's a movement that takes you forward. In the spiritual realm. I told some people in Poland. That, you know, many times people are just saying, you know, they are matured in spirit, but they are not. They are failing in small things. Just to come and clean the church. Just to come and clean. Small things. I mean, failing in those things. Pride come. Pride enters. And from there, they become something else. Tell somebody to say, my friend. I am not ignorant somewhere. I am not ignorant somewhere. A prodigal son, when he realized what he was eating, he was supposed to have defended his own position because of the shame that he can get when he's going back. But he said, no. But he says, it came to his mind. And say, I know where my father is. I can rather go there. I can rather be a slave. Let me go there and serve. Because I can still protect that my father, as I have spoken with him, when he was denying me when I want to go out, I proved him wrong. But this time, I need to go back and humble myself to my father and be a servant to serve than a son. Because if not, I will carry on eating. And I know where I come from. I don't know if you're hearing that. Listen to this. You need to come to your mind where you know yourself as a servant. You remove your ignorance. These things you say you know. Be sure if you know them. You know, many times we find that we're speaking in tongues also. and it becomes part of our ignorance and we don't even know what we are speaking about because many times when we speak in tongues it's when we are failing to admit that our prayer is finished we are fighting our ignorance we are covering up many people who are speaking in tongues they can't pray they can't pray they cannot pray in their language for a long time. They try to cover themselves and cover their ignorance. Where you lack knowledge, you need to check from today. Stop justifying yourself. Stop telling yourself that I'm dead. Tell yourself that it's God who will take me. I don't know if you're hearing that. Check somebody and say, hey, I want God to take me there. I want God to take me there. You know, a Christian, if he can overcome ignorance, he has ability to be silenced. Even if he has words to speak. Because always he will be searching for the wisdom from God. What if I say this? What if tomorrow it can turn to me? Let me leave it to God. You see what ignorance did to us. 
it makes us to judge others in a wrong way. Judging others without revelation. Today our Christianity is on the ground. Because we promoted our ignorance without looking on what God wants us to do. Today, I want you to overcome your ignorance and stop pretending to be something you not. I pray today for you that you will be delivered from this ignorance in the name of Jesus. Do you know that Jesus was furious one day? I don't think he spoke that when he was happy. He said, are you people, you are able to descend the sky. You are able to know the rain is coming. But you are failing to know the sign of times. Our ignorance closed our eyes to extend. We don't know what will happen to us. Our ignorance has closed our spiritual eyes. And we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Ask what will happen tomorrow. Say, answer me. What is it that will happen tomorrow? Can you see you don't know? Because there's too much information. Too much information. Let me give you the last scripture. If I give you this last scripture, I want you to go and check where are you trying to make yourself. In chapter 1, verse 13 to 19. Go and read that. Can you read that verse? I want yes. us to close soon. 1 Peter 1, 13. Petro Matoma chapter 1 verse 13. Yes. It says, So prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God. That is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. You heard that verse? verse I read it again. So prepare your minds for action. Uh -huh. Be completely okay. sober. Listen, prepare your mind for action. Okay, be completely sober. Okay, carry on. It says when you are sober, you are sober in spirit. Be steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. And fix your hope completely on the grace of God. Okay, stop there. Fix your hope completely. I was, I was telling people what happened to me. Yeah. God will never work anything until he destroy what you have done. Let me say it again. What you have created, what you have produced by your ability will never be mixed up with what God wants to bring. He will crush everything first. If God wants to lift you up, the moment you start to serve him, allow, you know, the downfall to come. When you start to fall down, How that, fix your hope. Focus, Focus on him completely. Because there are some things that you have that you think you need them, but it does not glorify God. Let me give you an example. Your car does not glorify God. But you need it. And when I talk again. So there are things that you have. But when you have the, you, you need them. But God wants to bring these things that will make his name to be glorified. 
the moment when you start to fix your eyes to him, expect Satan to be violent to you. One of the best signs of showing that you are in God is when you are able to lose all your receiving reward. You remember Zacchaeus? When he met Jesus, he became poor that day. Because all the money he has received, he was supposed to send it back. And this money got in a wrong way. When you receive Jesus, you are full the spirit first. Before you are filled. In the, in the, in the, in the physical. You are full. Full in the spirit. And before people see it, you are going to lose everything around you. And when it's inside, you will attract what is needed. God will bring his name to be glorified. If you come to me, you say, you got a testimony, I look at it. And check if truly it's a testimony. Because what you have to receive first is Jesus in you. I don't know if you hear me. Jesus is like magnet. When you are moving with him, all shall follow. All follow you. Even problems follow you. All. Challenges for sickness. Disappointment. Stagnation. Shame. Poverty. All follow you. Because it's in you. So those other things are there to check if you mean the business. Carry on moving. Carry on focus where you are going. Trust God that he is taking you to where he wants you to be. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Our problem is our focus. Like now I have a church here. If my focus is money, money will never come. Let me say it again. If I have a church and my focus is money, money will never come. Will never come. Money will never come. And God will never allow you to receive things that you are not fit to receive. He knows you. Because you will lose your soul and gain the world. Our ignorance has affected our Christian life. To extend that our Christianity is based in materials. Not in the one who is in us. Paul said, for me to live is him. For me to live is him. In other words, if I achieve something, is him. When I produce, is him. When I move, is him. My ability is him. Because I'm not in it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let's get out of this ignorance. Let's get out of this ignorance. Sometimes ignorance tells us that we are not in it. We are not in it. We are not in it. God must bless us now. We are anointed, must bless us. Whereas what we need is not what these people are saying. What we need is him. If we can catch him and he enters us here. I'm telling you, even when Satan tries to do anything, he won't, he won't separate with the love of God. Can you tell a neighbor, say, where do you think lies your ignorance? Because your focus is money. Your focus is money. It will never come. I'm not kissing you, I'm telling you the truth. It will never come. But when your focus is Jesus, and only him. When things come your way, and it's still him, what you'll get in the future is to glorify him. But if now when you are shaken, try to defend yourself, try to protect yourself, you are bound to have ignorance of 
and you find that the space of him has been occupied by the things you need. And Satan will bring those things to take your attention and give you direction. direction. It is so difficult. I will tell you that. I will give you an example. Me and Mama, we reach a level where because we suffer too much. We conclude and say, now our focus is heaven. We we'll preach and preach, but we we'll die. Our hope is Every day, I wake up and go to the bush. I come back. My focus was no money. Hey, money came. Go into the bush now. I need bodyguards. When I want to drive a car, when I want to go out, I need I need bodyguard. Can you see what is happening with us? Because now I have to, the moment when you receive this, you receive that. You, you start to have enemies. What you are receiving, try to receive. Like like receive. This, this thing of receiving, receive. This thing will really control you. What we need is to know that these things can be there. When you don't have ignorance, if God can teach you, even when money comes, it will control you. Even when money comes, it will change your state. You are still going to associate with the poor. You are still going to live life with other people. people. But, but if not, not, Satan will bring everything you need. And the ignorance will affect you. And one night when you are sleeping, you will hear the angel of death say, So, you are needed tonight. tonight. And then now all these things you have gathered. You have gathered in ignorance. Are you not ignorant? Where lies your focus? I want to read this scripture with close. Because I can see that uh, we need to close now. If we read the last scripture of X 17. 17. Verse 30. Verse 30. Yes. Let's read that scripture with close. Ask your neighbor, are you not ignorant? Read. Therefore God overlooked and disregarded the former ages of ignorance. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. That is to change their old way of thinking, to regret their past sins, to seek God's purpose for their lives. I want us to look at that verse and close. God overlooked all. All what we regret also. He disregard. All the former ages of ignorance. He is no longer looking on that. He wants all of us to come and repent. Our old way of thinking. God is no longer looking on that. As long as we are alive, God is looking at us. As long as we are alive, God is looking at us. Look here, remember God is God of patience and love. You have to give us mercy. You can see today, he overlooked it. See tomorrow, you have been given opportunity to repent. You have been given opportunity in the Old Testament, you do Testament wrong, you are Now, you, you, have, have, you have this grace and mercy. You overlooked. 
Some of you, you know where you come from. The Baba life you are living you are wrong. You, are wrong. you won't afford to go back to the same way of living. You have been given opportunity to repent. Come out from this ignorance. Come out from this ignorance. We can come out. And live a holy life. And serve him. What is important is to serve God. Not to be used to God. To serve him. Not to give myself, hey, I'm an apostle now. To serve him. To serve him. I'm a prophet. No, to Nagin serve him. Prophet, awa, Allow God to bring all the signs of apostolic and prophetic or pastoring apostle, when you are serving him. Without trying to look at yourself. How far are you? Who's knowing you? Who does not know you? But still, you are still doing what is disregarding, what is overlooking. I'll give you another revelation. I'll tell you this. There's no need to live 100 years. Many people that are reaching 90, 90 something years. God has given them chance to repent. There's no issues of they have lived long life. No. This, is God was giving them chance to repent. After you have done what you are doing, they must go home. This is not home. If you find someone say, hey, I'm celebrating that, no, I'm not just giving that person. Repent. Repent. The day you die, you realize, ah, I was supposed to have followed God. This person has lived long life. Nothing. There's no long life here. Long life is eternity. I'm praying today that you look at your ignorance. Don't overlook it. Allow God to overlook it. Ask God forgiveness. You move and if serve him. You follow God. And God of mercy will bless you. I say he will bless you. God bless you.